Well, despite I have had the misfortune of delaying my first time watches from last month, I've decided to go ahead and give you <clears throat> my ranking of the films I re-watched during the month of April 2022 right now. Big days, entertainment rankings and reviews. So greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name's Dual, better known to you as the Big D, back again with another ranking. Today I'm going to rank my April 2022 rewatches. Now I rewatched 36 films overall. Yes, so you're going to be ready for something big? I hope so, because I'm going to again try and go rapid fire, and unlike what I've tried on my two, first two attempts of first time watches, which again has been delayed until further notice. This this time, no, no errors. No movies forgotten or anything like that. So, there are 36 movies here. So, get ready because I'm going to go rapid fire here. And I'll be back to show my face with the final five. So now if you're ready, sit back, relax, and here we go. Number 36 is Holy Man from 1998. This dramedy stars A. Murphy as this here guy who apparently helps out with this home shopping network thingy. Jeff Goldblum's in this, and well, I hadn't seen this film in years, and after rewatching it, it's not as great as I remember. The only thing I liked about this was the bit with Morgan Fairchild. That was pretty darn funny. But this is an okay film. Not really one of A. Murphy's greats, though. Number 35 is Swim Fan from 2005, two, 2002. I'm sorry, I said 2005. My mistake. It's 2002. This film is... Is is okay. I've seen it a few times. It's not really that great though. With um, Erica Christensen, Jesse Bradford, and Sherry Appleby, this film's well, it's decent in some ways, but not really great though. I just found Sherry Appleby's just more recently been directing episodes of Young Sheldon. As a matter of fact, can you believe that? I can't. But this film is pretty suspenseful though. Number 34 is Red Riding Hood from 2011. Now, this film didn't quite do so well, but I think this film's okay. I mean, with Amanda Seyfried, this film's not too bad. This was another one of the few films that kind of took a darker take on fairy tales and hopefully possibly try to follow up in the footsteps of Twilight, you know, except with werewolves, you know. Gary Oldman's in this. He's not too bad. The rest of the cast is, isn't too bad, but this film isn't really the best. But, well, if I do give it another rewatch, it might be up a little higher. Number 33 is Hide and Seek from 2005. This film's kind of underrated, and this film's okay, with Robert De Niro and Dakota Fanning. I will say that it's been a long time since I saw this film. After re-watching this, it's still an okay film. Not really a great one, but it's pretty so suspenseful, and it's got a bit of a supernatural feel, you know. Uh, maybe I'll talk about this film sometime down the road, uh, yeah, it does have a bit of a dark feel to it. Number 32 is Mikey from 1992. This underrated killer kid flick stars Brian Bonsall. Most of you know him best as Andy from Family Ties and also from Blank Check and a few other movies. Uh, this film kind of does rank up with some other killer kid flicks like Blade Birthday and... Uh, Let's say Children of the Corn and stuff like that. The Omen, the original. Yeah. This is just about one kid who gets sent to a, one foster family to another. Not quite like Andy in the Child's Play franchise, but nonetheless, this kid is really dangerous. Really killer, too, you know. If you haven't seen this film, you should check it out. I know the full foot film's on YouTube. It's also on Tubi as well. Check it out. Number one... Number 31, excuse me, I'm, I got ahead of myself. Number 31 is Anaconda's The Hunt for the Blood Orchid from 2004. Now, this film is a follow-up to Anaconda, which we'll see where that winds up. I hadn't seen this film in years, and since I had watched Lake Placid and its sequels the previous month, I decided to give the Anaconda's franchise a go for it. If 
I had seen the third and fourth ones, you'll see them on the first time watch this ranking once I get a new improved version fixed up. Now, this film's, you know, it's reasonable, but not as good as the um, other one, but it does have some pretty suspenseful moments and what have you. But anyway, I do like the song you hear at the closing credits, which is um, called Chappelle. That's pretty darn killer, you know. Number 30 is Wild Things 2 from 2004. I actually saw this on one of the Stars Networks a few years back. The film is a follow-up to the 1998 film. We'll see where that winds up. The third one's also on this ranking, since it has um, Susan Ward, who I know best from the in crowd, and Lila R.C. Airy, who was on Son of the Beach. I also know her from Daddy Daycare as well. Plus Isaiah Washington. This film's alright. It's not quite as memorable as the the first one. But still, it does prove to have a little hot moments and what have you. Number 29 is Analyze This from 1999. This is another film I had seen in years. Directed by the late great Harold Ramis. This is a very funny film with Robert De Niro and Billy Crystal. De Niro plays an angst-ridden mobster who has to get help from a psychiatrist. And he keeps following him every time. Even when he's trying to get married to, um, well, his fiance, played by Lisa Kudrow. This film's absolutely funny. If you haven't seen this, check it out. I gotta review this sometime or sooner. Number 28 is Starship Troopers 2, Hero of the Federation, from 2000, I think it was 2004, 2003. But anyway, this of course is the sequel to the 1997 film, which we'll see where that winds up. This film is kind of underrated. It's okay, it's not quite as good as the first, since no one from the first cast is back. But overall, it still has those killer bugs and what have you, the arachnids and what have you. Yeah. Um, overall, it's okay and what have you. At least it was a little better after watching this again on Tubi. Number 27 is Anaconda from 1997. Now, this film did pretty well despite being dissed by critics, but this film... It's still good in some ways. I mean, I like the performances we got. I mean, J-Lo and Ice Cube were pretty good. John Voight was alright and what have you. But the rest was a little, well, a little mixed and what have you. But the Anaconda was pretty darn killer. Great underrated, um, well, film. You know, it's sort of underrated, but not completely underrated completely. Since this is a cult classic, you know. <laughs> Number 26 is Stuart Little 2 from 2002. This film's pretty fun. I mean, I do like it all, kind of almost as much as the first one, which we'll see where that winds up. This film is, is a pretty good sequel, a pretty good continuation, what have you. I mean, we got the same actors back, most of them anyway. Gina Davis, Hugh Laurie, Jonathan Lipnicki, Michael J. Fox is back as a title character. Um, Nathan Bell, Nathan, Nathan Lane's back, excuse me, as Snow Bell, and I liked, um, Melanie Griffith voice in Margolo, and James Woods voice in Falcon, yeah, uh, this film's not too bad, I like it. Number 25 is I Still Know What You Did Last Summer from 1998, we'll see where the original winds up, this film's Really underrated. Uh, now, this is an underrated film with a great cast. Well, just a few of the originals are back. Jennifer Love Hewitt, Freddie Prince Jr. We got Brandy on board. And uh, Makai Pfeiffer in one of his early films. Yeah. I do like the um, Island Resort thing, but even so, it's pretty good. I still like the original a little more, but this has more blood and what have you. But anyway, I still like it for what it is. Number 24 is The Easter Bunny is Coming to Town from 1977. Another underrated special from Rankin Bay's. I mean, I didn't get to watch a lot of Easter specials. Didn't get to see um, um, It's the Easter Beagle, Charlie Brown, or even Here Comes Peter Contel. I failed to do a review of this. This was the film's 45th anniversary last month, but I'll make up for that next time. This film's so good. It does have 
Fred Astaire back. This film's kind of a semi-sequel to Santa Claus is Coming to Town. And some of the story is kind of, rem well, similar to it, but just with a few differences in my If you haven't seen this, you might want to give this a shot. Skip Hand's pretty good as Sunny, who, of course, is the Easter Bunny. This film's not too bad. Give it a try. Number 23 is Encino Man from 1992. Now, I hadn't seen this film in ages. I watched it on Tubi, and I really got to see all the hystericalness this film had to offer. With Pauly Shore and Brendan Fraser in one of his early films, this film's so funny. I am going to review this film later on, so be on the lookout for it. But anyway, I think it's just absolutely funny. Two guys, well, find a caveman, and boy... It really turns things upside down. Uh, but, well, or something like that. But anyway, in Seal Man, pretty funny. Number 22 is Wild Things, Diamonds in the Rough, a.k.a. Wild Things 3 from 2000. I think it's 2005, I believe, or it was 2006. This film, I absolutely got a kick out of. It may have that same feel the first two films had, but it involves a lot of diamonds and what have you. But anyway, if you're not seeing this, this is one flick you gotta check out. It provides a whole lot of hotness and what can I say? It's just got a lot of hotness. <laughs> Number 21 is Jawbreaker from 1999. I love this movie. This film's easily a guilty pleasure of mine. I love the performances we got from Rose McGowan, Rebecca Gayhart's in this, so is uh, let's see, Judy Greer, one of her early films. Uh, this film's so awesome. It's got a good, a pretty good story, and I need to review this one. Oh yeah, a great soundtrack too, which includes the song "You Who" by Imperial Teen. I can't seem to get that out of my head to revisiting this film, you know. Number 20 is I Know What You Did Last Summer from 1997. I love this film. This film is a great slasher flick. I don't care what anybody says. As much as I did like the, do like the sequel, but this film has a lot more nostalgia and what have you. I mean, with J-Love and Freddie Prinze Jr. plus Sarah Michelle Gell and Ryan Philippe, yeah. Not too bad. I do like how this story starts out. It's just so blooming awesome. And, well, if it's ever on, if I give you a few months after I've watched the film Tops, I'll rewatch it. But anyway, this film's so good. Number 19 is Urban Legend from 1998. Another slasher flick I've come to love. I watched this a few times on TV and it, well, hasn't aged much. This film is pretty underrated and I have reviewed this film. I need to review the sequel, which I feel is way underrated, not, but not great though. This film is much more cooler. With a great cast, that includes Alicia Witt, um, Jared Leo, uh, plus Joshua Jackson, Michael Rosenbaum, Rebecca Gayhart, and Tara Reid. This film's pretty killer. I love it. Number 18 is One Hour Photo from 2004. This film is pretty killer. I hadn't seen this film in a long time as well. I do have it on video, but... Well, I found it on Tubi last month, and I rewatched it. It's still just as I remembered. Robin Williams delivers a real killer performance. Uh, of course, it wouldn't be the first time, because he did Insomnia before this. But anyway, he plays this dude who works at, uh, well, this here, um, big store, like a Walmart or something. It's called Save Mart, and, well, he's getting interested in a family and what have you, uh, Checks out the foes and what have you. Yeah, this is pretty suspenseful. If you haven't seen this film, you gotta check it out. I gotta review this sometime. Number 17 is Leap from 2017. Now, although this was actually produced a year before, it's in 2016. This film's also known as Battle Arena, and this film's very amazing. I went and saw this in the theater, and what can I say? I love it. It's still as good as I remember when I've rewatched it on. IMDb TV, which is actually now freebie, as a matter of fact, if you haven't noticed. But anyway, if you've not seen this film, you need to check out. Now, while on some showings on streaming, they show with the Battle Arena tile, which that's understandable. But anyway, Leap is so amazing. If you're into good flicks with a good 
feel to this. I loved every bit of it. Leap is right up your alley. I gotta review this one. Number 16 is Because of Win dixie from 2005. Now, I hadn't seen this film in a long time. I watched this on Disney+, Plus, and I gotta say, this is easily an underrated film. It's really good. Aunt Sophia Robb does an amazing job. This would be her first theatrical film, but it'd be her second film overall that she'd get introduced to, because before this, she was in the televised film Samantha and American Girl Holiday on the now defunct WB network. Of course, after this, she played Violet Beauregard in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory the same year this came out. But this film's so um, amazing, why have you? Now this gal gets this here stray dog, and she calls it Win dixie just like the store. And, well, it's pretty good. It's got a great cast. It includes some Jeff Daniels, and we see um, Harlan Williams, and then... Um, Dave Matthews, yeah, this film's pretty good. You gotta check this one out, and I gotta review this one, too. Number 15 is Cliffhanger from two, from 1993. I had forgot I did see this film a few years back, but after rewatching it, it did bring back some memories. Stallone is absolutely really good in this film. And, well, it was directed by Rainy Harlan, who had recently done Nightmare on Elm Street 4. He'd also gone to do Deep Blue Sea as well after this. But Cliffhanger is just so awesome. I consider this to be a, probably one of my few favorite um, Stallone flicks, aside from Rambo or Rocky. It's pretty good. I gotta review this. Maybe I will next year for its anniversary. Number 14 is The Burning uh, from 1981. Love this film. This is a gray slasher. Can't go wrong with this one about this here prank gone wrong on the caretaker of this here camp who gets horribly burnt and reemerges with a pair of garden shears going after campers. Pretty cool. Tom Savini, who did the makeup effects on Friday the 13th, took part of this, which explains why he didn't work on Friday the 13th Part 2, which came out the same year. This film is just so killer. I really do like it. It's awesome. Number 13 is Stuart Little from 1999. I love this movie. Great film, great characters. Well, not much to be said, but I do love this film. It's just so amazing. Based on E.B. White's book of the same name. I mean, even though I do like the sequel, but I like this one a whole lot more. It's just a lot of fun. Number 12 is The Rage, Carrie 2, also from 1999. This film's easily an underrated sequel, and it's a guilty pleasure of mine. We'll see where the original Carrie wound up. I rewatched that as well. I love this film. Emily Burgle's real good. The rest of the cast is not too bad either. I like the music we hear in this. It's just so awesome. And unlike the original, it has more bloody moments than what have you once our main character goes, well, you know. <laughs> Gotta check this one out if you haven't. Number 11 is Wild Things from 1988. Another guilty pleasure. I love this movie. This film is so killer. It's suspenseful. What can I say? A lot of the performances we got from the cast, including Matt Dillon, Kevin Bacon, Nev Campbell, even Denise Richards. I'm just going to say, it's really good. I mean, now that I've seen all the films, including Foursome, the fourth one, you'll see that on the first time watch this ranking. But those films don't even come close to being as high as Wild Things. I, I'm hoping I'll get this for my DVD collection something, because I want to get the special on Ray because it, it has a more extended footage of... Well, I better not talk about because I don't want to bore the audience and what have you if you're watching this, you know. <laughs> Number 10 is the original Carrie from 1976. Love this film. It's You can't go wrong with this one. With Sissy Spacek playing the title character, plus Piper Laurie, Nancy Allen, Amy Irving, John Travolta, and all those Great actors. This film's so killer and what have you. Well, it may not have gotten blame and what have you at the prom scene, but even so, the original Carrie is just so awesome. I do love this film. Again, you can't go wrong with it. Number nine is Dick Tracy from 1990. Now, I plan to review this film later in the month. This film's really awesome, based on the comic strip of the same name. Warren Beatty, who also directed the film, does a great job in playing the title character. We got great performances from just about everybody. Al Pacino 
is in this. Yeah, um, uh, plays big boy, and yeah, they're pretty. He's pretty good. Um, Madonna's really good. It's Breathless Mahoney. Yeah, I love all the characters in this. This film's pretty good. Again, I will review this film later in the month because this film's just wow. Number eight, it's Office Space from 1999. Another guilty pleasure, man. I love this film. Directed by Mike Judge, the guy who brought us Beavis and Butthead and King of the Hill. This film's based on um, Judge's earlier works on the character of uh, Milton, who you see in the picture, played by Stephen Root. But it focuses on some other people, though. But anyway, it's really funny. I love the performances we got from Ron Livingston. Jennifer Aniston's really good. I like Stephen Root as Milton. He's pretty good. And Gary Cole plays Bill Lumberg. Yeah, he's fine. Yeah, hi. It's me again, Bill Lumberg. Yeah, very funny movie. Office Space is absolutely hysterical. And I gotta review this one as well. Number seven is Black Yellow from 1972. Another guilty pleasure of mine. I love this film. I already reviewed this film. I did a live stream of it last year. This film is just so underrated, and I just love it. It's one of my favorite black exploitation flicks. William Marshall does a great job in playing the titular character, who happens to be an African prince named Mama Waldy, who reawakens from a long slumber after being bitten by Count Dracula after he refuses to help Mama Waldy with the slave trade. Boy, I gotta tell you, this is so good. It also has some good music as well. If you haven't seen Black Yellow, you gotta check out check out the sequel too. Even though I didn't rewatch it this well last month, but it's cool though. Number six is Cartoon All Starts to the Rescue from 1990. Love this film. The full special this is on YouTube, and well, this only got shown on TV one time, but anyway, this film's just so incredible showing about drugs and alcohol and what have you and these cartoon characters ranging from Bugs Bunny to the um, the Muppet Babies the Chipmunks to Winnie the Pooh and all that stuff they help out this teenager get over this here drug addiction and alcoholism and all that stuff if you haven't seen my review of this which I did in the Saturday morning TV log special you gotta check this out okay whoo Man, to get through that real well. Anyway, I hope you've been enjoying this so far. Anyway, now it's time for the final five. And let me tell you something. It was it was a pretty big one, and why have you? Anyway, it's got um recent a few recent hits, and why have you? Plus them. Um, Plus a couple of films that I that I, I really enjoyed seeing years back. Anyway, I hope you're ready for the final five because I'm going to get into this. As you'll see me after I show you the movie and what have you, picture and what have you. You know what I'm saying. Coming in at number five is... Sonic the Hedgehog from 2020. Now, this was one of the last films to come out before, well, even once before the pandemic even started. But I love this film. Anyway, this film, I didn't think it was going to be good, considering after they made a terrible design with Sonic at first. But I'm glad they managed to fix him up and look, made him look much better. Anyway, and I didn't know what to think of Jim Carrey as Robotnik, but after watching it, it changed my mind. Uh, I love this performance. He brought back the the funny guy of Jim Carrey we knew and loved long ago back in the 90s. And that was awesome. Mm -hmm. Now, you'll see where you'll see the second film on the rewatch. Not, 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 oh, excuse me, first time watches. Sorry, I'm going to let that slide. The... <sighs> I'm getting too far ahead of myself again, ain't I? My apologies. Yes, you'll see the second one on the first time watch this ranking once it's up for realsies. Anyway, Sonic the Hedgehog is just so awesome. It's a blast. And one of you, I think this film was just awesome. I love the performances from the cast. Ben Schwartz was real good at Sonic. What can I say? This was just one of the great... Greatest video game films of all time, that is until its sequel just more recently surpassed it. 
Yeah, you better believe it. Anyway, Sonic the Hedgehog, the movie from 2020. Great film. I do love it. Next, coming in at number four is... Starship Troopers from 1997. I love this movie. This film's awesome. While it does have a few slight differences from the actual book and what have you, I'm just going to say this was so awesome. This kind of is a guilty pleasure as well, considering this didn't do so well at the box office, but still became a cult classic in one of you, and it got much better response in the, these last few years. Anyway, Starship Troopers is just an awesome movie. Uh, I love the cast. We got Casper Van Dien, uh, Dan Meyer, Denise Richards, Clancy Brown, who, of course, was still just a bit before he voiced a certain Mr. Krabs on SpongeBob, even though he did do some other stuff before this, like, um, well, he appeared in Pet Cemetery 2 before this. <laughs> but anyway, great cast, great characters, great effects in my view, man. The battles with those arachnids, those big bugs were so awesome. That's why I love this film. I will review this film later on this year for its anniversary. So be on the lookout for it. It'll be a few months, though, but I'll have it ready. I can guarantee you that. Paul Verhoeven, who directed RoboCop and Showgirls, and after this, he directed Hallman. He did a great job on this. This was very good. Starship Troopers, awesome. Now, coming in at number three is... Free Guy from last year in 2021. I saw this in the theater, and I loved it. After rewatching it on Disney+, Plus since they and HBO Max got it, I'm going to say this film is still a blast from start to finish. Ryan Reynolds delivers one of the best performances he gave since Deadpool. Or even Detective Pikachu. Anyway, I really loved Free Guy. This was just so much fun seeing um, um, so many great characters in my hand. Even Taika Waititi, who of course, he's We'll be seeing his next film, which will be Thor Love and Thunder later on this summer. Of course, he had already done Thor Ragnarok and um, Jojo Rabbit. Um, Joey Comer's in this. She's really good. And there's so many others. And even why I, I almost didn't notice after rewatching this, Akash Ambedkar. Of course, um, we've recently seen him on CBS's new hit comedy, Ghost, which is... Going to be coming back for a second season. Because that was actually my favorite comedy of last the last season. Uh, thank you. Even though I never saw the original UK version of that show. Which I'm sure is funny. But anyway, Free Guy is really cool. And I think this film deserves a sequel. It seems that... That there is... That they did say that... Well, the president of 20th Century Studios says that a script is, was being submitted shortly and called the sequel a fantastic story. So, we'll hope for the best that this will come out sooner or later. Free Guy, it's awesome. I love the feel of the film being in a video game. It's awesome. And coming in at number two is... Romy and Michelle's High School Reunion from 1997. Another guilty pleasure of mine. I love this film. This film is probably one of my absolute favorite chick flicks. I love the performances we got from Mira Savino and Lisa Kudrow as the, the tile characters. They are so awesome. Everyone else was pretty funny too. I love the story. I love the atmosphere. Uh, showing them having... Showing a little bit of 80s feel to it. Before we saw The Wang Singer with Adam Sandler and Drew Barrymore, which came out the following year. But anyway, this film was so awesome. I loved it. If you haven't seen my review of this, you got to check it out. Which I had, I had forgotten to mention in my review. There was actually a prequel film that came out on ABC Family a few years later. I never did see it, though. I bet it was 
okay or what have you. I don't think it would be as good as this one, though. But Romy and Michelle's High School Reunion, I do love it. It's really a great film. You need to check it out. And finally, my number one rewatch of April 2022 is... Spider-Man No Way Home from last year. This film was one of, if not the best Spider-Man flick the MCU had to offer. I love this film. I recently got on DVD. Finally got to watch it at the last minute because I got myself a replacement PS3 since I had the misfortune of losing control and caused a slight crack with a slight break or crack with my old system. But I've got an, a different one now and it's and it works. I'm glad I got to revisit this film. I love every bit of this film from start to finish. It was so awesome. It was great to see um, Toby Maguire and Andrew Garfield back from the original series, which I am going to review re-review the original Spider-Man trilogy. The Amazing Spider-Man films will come up later on. But anyway, I loved it. This film, it's just so awesome. Bandit Cumberbatch was good. Doctor Strange, which I'm looking forward to. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, which is opening later on this week, so I'll be ready for that. Anyway, but everyone else was really good too. Uh, yeah, you can't go wrong with this. This is the best one I've seen. And this was a monster hit. And my favorite film of 2021. All right, there you have it. My April rewatches for this year, 2022. So, what did you think of this ranking? And what's your... What's your top... What's your favorite rewatch? You can tell me what your top five or top three are tops in the comment section below. Just let me know what you've rewatched this month. And give me... Again, give me three or five, whatever. Or your top one. Anyway... If you like this video, click the like button, subscribe to my channel, and be a part of the Big D Nation. And stay tuned, my May 2022 schedule will be revealed later on tonight, plus my pickups for April 2022. So thanks for watching, and if you like this, consider checking out my reviews for these films that I just talked about, the three films I just finished talking about. In the upper left-hand corner is my review of Spider-Man No Way Home. The upper right-hand corner is my review of Romeo and Michelle's High School Reunion. And the bottom left-hand corner is my review of Free Guy. And the bottom right-hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thank you for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.